again and welcome back to Cutie Girl Crochet. This is Corinne and this tutorial is on the boot part of our crocodile stitch booties, slippers. So uh, in my previous tutorial we did the sole, so look for that under my list of videos. And now we're going to be working on this, this part right here. Uh, you will need to know how to do front post and back post double crochets and um, if you don't you will learn how to do them with this project and also you will do uh, you will be doing uh, front post two together in this area to gather the toe part and um, you will need a size G hook for this and I am using the variegated neon of I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby and I, I use these little containers of pretzels from Costco to hold my yarn. They're awesome for holding a skein of yarn. I don't spend a lot of money on yarn holders or yarn bowls or although they're very pretty I'm a little bit more frugal than that. So Anyhow, so get your yarn set up and your hook and let's get started. Okay, so you've made your sole from the sole tutorial and we're going to be joining the yarn just at the bottom of this bump right here. So if you count from this bump between the two lines, if you count one, two, three, four. That's where we're going to be joining our yarn is in that stitch right there in the fourth little segment. Counting this bump as the first segment. One, two, three, four. And just hook your yarn. Basically at the bottom of that where you originally started increasing right there. So some people count. I don't like to count. I don't like to. I don't like to count. So that's I go by visual little landmarks, which will be right there. All right. So I don't do a slip stitch here. I just put my hook in, grab my yarn, pull it through, and then I chain one with both of the yarns. Drop the tail, and then do two more chains for a total of chain three. And now what we're going to do is in each the back stitch of each uh, single crochet that we did from the previous tutorial we're going to double crochet. So just all the way around double crochet in the back stitch only all the way around. This part of the um, booty, the slipper, is the most time consuming. It doesn't take too long, but it is the most time consuming than the sole or the uh, cuff part of the boot. So we're just going to continue on all the way around. We are not going to do any doubles. It is just one double crochet per one back loop all the way around. I don't have a written pattern for this yet. I did attempt to write one out, but it's much, much easier to show someone how to do this than it is to explain how to do it because of my little visual landmarks. Patterns require counting.
All right, now we're going across the heel part. All right, I'm about halfway there. I'm going to stop the video and I will see you when we get to the end. All right, I wanted to show you how I'm catching. You'll have a little tail at the top of your um, sole that you made, and I just kind of catch it in my double crochets as I'm going around because like I said I hate weaving in ends so I'm almost to the end and you need to end on a a multiple of two you can't have an odd amount you must have an even amount for this part so Sometimes it works out to where it's even and sometimes it doesn't and that's okay. And that just has to do with how you tie in this corner right here or if you miss one along the way or you don't have to rip it out. There's a, there's a little fudgy area over here where you join that you can correct that and I'll show you that in a second. I don't count as I go. I count when I'm done because sometimes it works out to an even amount and sometimes it doesn't, so I just wait to the end because that's where you adjust anyway. So now I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we cannot have an odd amount. So what I do right here is in that one though, where I joined, where I did my chain three in that space right there. I just do another double crochet. And now I have an even amount. And then I just around this chain three, I just put my hook in there and join with a slip stitch. You want that to be in the back anyway, so you don't have to go in the top of the stitch, you don't have to grab an edge of a stitch just right between this chain three and that double crochet just put your hook in there and slip stitch all right and now we're going to do front post back post 
double crochet and the, and it makes this ribbed looking pattern and it gives it a lot of stretchiness and give and it also gives it some some squishiness here's the inside it looks exactly the same on the inside so it gives it some texture and it's, it's like a rib stitch for crochet so what we want to do is our first chain three just chain three and that counts as a back post double crochet in this pattern so we want to yarn over and now we're going to do a front post double crochet and that means we're going to put our hook directly underneath our double crochet from the previous row we're going to yarn over and do a double crochet all right and now the next one is going to be a back post double crochet so you yarn over you put your hook through the back around that double crochet pull up a loop and do a double crochet all right again yarn over front post we're alternating front post and back post for this whole row for this whole round and all the rest of the rounds from here on out put your hook in straight in we're not going through the top of the double crochet we're not going through the back of the stitch or the front of the stitch we're going underneath that double crochet which makes this a post and we are double crocheting around that post so now we're going to do a back post so yarn over insert your hook from the back pull up a loop and double crochet and you can see it's starting to make that rib looking stitch all right and continue this on all the way around to the end after your chain three you start with the front post after your chain three, which counts as your first back post, then you go front post, back post, front post, back post, front post, back post. <laughs> Say that ten times really fast. So I will continue on so you can get the idea of this. And you just have to do this all the way around. Once you learn how to do this stitch, it's pretty easy. It gets pretty fluid. You just, let me go a little bit slower. I've been doing these for so long, I can, I can whip these out pretty fast. So I'll go a little bit slower. Yarn over, pull up your post, double crochet. That's your front post, yarn over, pull up your post in the back, double crochet, yarn over, Pull up your post, double crochet, yarn over, pull up your post in the back, double crochet. You're working with the front of your work here and the back of your work here. And we're going to do this all the way around. This takes a little bit of practice, but you can get it. If you don't know how to do this stitch, this is a, a really nice stitch to use for many projects. It's great for headbands and hats, and it's just a it's just a nice kind of a squishy stitch to use for certain things. I used this stitch once when making a pretty neat beret was a pattern that I had gotten. Oh, I can't remember the name of the gal right now, but it was a really neat beret and it used this front post, back post, which is where I actually learned how to do this stitch it was from her pattern. I had never done it before and uh, it was super cute.
All right, continue on doing this till you get to the end. And I will meet you back here. Okay, I am at coming to the end of my row. I'm doing my last two stitches, my back post. You always want to end up on a front post. Double crochet. If you don't, in this first step, go back around and make sure you didn't do two in a row. Sometimes I've been spacing out and I'll do two back posts or two front posts and you always want to end end up on a front post double crochet. And the reason why I don't really count the exact amount of stitches around is because that number is going to change according to how wide or how long you have made your sole. Sometimes it's it, it changes according to what size you're doing your slipper. So again you just want to put your hook in around that chain three and slip stitch. You don't have to go on the top or do anything, just go right around it. Now we are going to front post double crochet and back post double crochet for two more rows. Just like what we just did, chain three, and that counts as your first back post double crochet, yarn over, and then do your front post, back post, double crochet. All the way around. And you're going to do this for two more rows. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Pop some music on. And uh, do some crochet meditation. And front post, back post, double crochet. And I will see you back here after your next two rows. Welcome back. I am doing my last few front post, back post, double crochets for my on my fourth row. Maybe if the yarn cooperates. And then I'm joining with my slip stitch to my first chain three. And this is about what your project should look like. <clears throat> Excuse me. Starting to, you can start to see the little ribs on there taking shape. It looks exactly the same on the inside. Now for this fifth row, we're going to start gathering the toe part. Because the toe part you can't just make it straight up. You have to gather it to a point right here. So we're going to be starting that with this row. So we're going to front post, back post, double crochet to the same point as where we're starting here. So from this, this is our chain three row right here. So from right here, you go all, you go across and this back post right here is where you're going to be stopping. Anyhow, you want to go directly across and stop. Because then we're going to be gathering this whole section. So that's front post, back post double crochet all the way around.
The thing about these slippers is they're very forgiving. You can <clears throat> fudge a stitch here and there and it is not going to show. It doesn't make a difference in your finished product. It's They're very forgiving if you have to adjust a row or like in the beginning where I had to add another stitch. You'll never ever see that. Your customer will never see it and they're very very forgiving. close to where we're supposed to be stopping to decrease the toe section. Yes, right here is where we're supposed to be stopping. What I do is I kind of flatten out my work and where I started and where I need to stop should be along the same row. So from here all the way around for the rest of the toe part we're only going to do the front post double crochets. So all the way around we're going to completely ignore the back post double crochets and just do the front post double crochets. And that is going to start decreasing your toe part. And for this stage, there is a, from the decrease, there's, we have four more rows to go. There's nine rows total. All right slip stitch to that first chain three and now you can see that we're starting to decrease that toe section okay so now for this next row we want to do the back post front post double crochet all the way to that point where we stop we'll end on a back post double crochet in the same place that we stopped on the previous row. So back post, front post, double crochet all the way around. And then we are going to front post two together. And that's going to decrease even more. And I will show you how to do that when we get there.
from here it goes a little faster because you've just reduced your amount of stitches around by a third. So it goes just a tiny bit faster now. back post, double crochet, so you're going to end with a back post. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do front post, double crochet, two together. So you want to yarn over, insert your hook behind that first front post, double crochet, yarn over, pull up, let me, let me back up and do that, yarn over, go under that first stitch like you would for a post, yarn over again, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops and stop there. Then you want to yarn over, instead of completing your double crochet, you're going to go into the next uh, double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and now you're going to yarn over and pull through three loops, and that is front post, double crochet, two together. Alright, let's do that again. Yarn over, we're going to go into the next double crochet as a post, we're not going to go in the top, we're not going to go in the back loop, we're going just like we've been doing yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then stop there, yarn over, go under the next double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three loops, and you can see how that is gathering that together in a nice um, flow. It doesn't, there's no edges, there's no bumps, there's no anything. It just looks like it's supposed to be like that. So yarn over, front post, two together. Yarn over again, pull through three. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over through two loops, yarn over, Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over through two loops, yarn over through three loops. Okay? And you're going to do that for the whole toe section. And you can see that it's really starting to decrease your toe section of your slipper. extra front post double crochet. It does not matter. Just work it up as a normal front post double crochet. Just like that. 
and then join. It's not going to show, it's not going to matter, it, it, sometimes it happens. So. so now you can really see that your toe is starting to curve in, become more slipper-like. All right, and for this next row, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to front pose, back pose, double crochet to our stopping point on the other side. And then we are going to front pose, back post, two together again in this area. And we are on our seventh row. Okay, so I'm getting to the last few stitches. To where we need to stop. And you're gonna stop on a back post, double crochet. All right, and now we're going to front post two together. So where we join those last two is where we're going to go under. And we're going to join these two segments here. So yarn over, go through both of those. That, that counts as one. Both of those count as one. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops, just like that. And now we're going to yarn over and go through the next two that we joined. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. And then pull through all three loops. Okay, and we're going to do that all the way across. still have that extra next front post double crochet. That's not a problem. I'm just going to work it like normal and join it with my Okay, now you can see, really see it's starting to look slipper-like. Okay. 
All right, for the next row, we chain three. And again, front post, back post, all the way to our stopping point. to our stopping point and I, I misspoke earlier I said we were going to do nine rows it's actually only eight so you can do nine if you want to uh, if you want a, a deeper shoe part of the you know if you have somebody maybe with a thicker foot or something but I don't think it's necessary Alright, and we're going to end on our back post double crochet that is now way over here because we've gathered so much. So what we're now we're going to do is we're going to gather all of these stitches here into whoops, all of these stitches here into one cluster. So to do that we're going to yarn over, we're going to pick up those first two yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. We're going to yarn over again, pull through this, the second cluster, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. We now have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, we're going to pull up the next, yarn over, pull through two. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we have four on our hook, yarn over, pull, insert your hook through the next two, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, you have five on your hook, yarn over, insert through your next two, yarn over, pull through two, and you should have six loops on your hook. If you don't, it's not a big deal. If you have seven or five, it just means you have less of these on your on your hook. Or maybe you decided to incorporate this last uh, uh, front post double crochet. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and incorporate that one. Just snug the whole thing together. So now I have seven loops on my hook. See, it's very forgiving. Now you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull your yarn through all of those loops and make a cluster, just like that. Okay, and now you're going to insert your hook into that first chain three. Slip stitch. I do a one chain stitch and then I tie it up and there you have your slipper part, your boot part. Super cute. If you have someone who's got a narrow foot, you can decrease your sole stitches by two instead of going all the way to 16. Um, you can do 14 if they have a very narrow foot and plus you reduce for children's sizes too. I'll show you what this looks like on my foot which is I wear a size 9 
I don't have extra wide feet or anything, and I'll show you that these fit my, nine, my size 9 foot really well. So let me do that right now. Okay, here is that same slipper on my size 9 foot. You can see it fits perfectly. It's not too big and it's not too small. They stretch to where they're... They fit good for a for a that size. Um, they could fit probably a size eight. They could probably even fit a size seven, possibly. Maybe you would decrease a couple on your sole for a size six and seven, but this will fit a size nine, ten, pretty well. Because like I said, my feet aren't. My feet aren't big at all. So, that's what your shoe will look like. Now, if you want to stop here and just make a little slipper, you can do a couple of, of edges and put a button on here or, and just have a little ballerina slipper. But we're going to continue on and do the cuff. All right, see you back here and just, uh, actually, I'm gonna make it a whole other video on how to do the cuff. So uh, look for that third video on, um, on my page. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Please follow me on Facebook at Cutie Girl Crochet. Please leave any comments and you can email me at cutiegirlcrochet at gmail.com and I thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.